Welcome to this tutorial on the Art History Brush. Uh, this is a pretty fantastic picture for using the Art History Brush, so uh, we won't have to do too much with it, but I'll go through some of the steps. Uh, open up the picture, it's called Roses, it's found on my website. Once you have it opened up, normally with Art History, I would start by uh, saturating the image. So I might go to Image Adjustments, Hue and Saturation, and adding a little bit of saturation to it. We don't really have to do too much to this image because it's already pretty saturated as it is. Uh, so you can pretty much just leave it uh, leave it as it is. Now the art history brush is used for making impressionist or um, uh, painterly like effects on your uh, on your photographs. And it does this by using a number of different brushes. Um, I've done some experiments already with this photo and so I know it's going to work, but there are a bunch of different brushes that you can choose from. Uh, of course you can use your regular old brush tips, the same brush sizes, and you can choose from any of these. And you can paint in any way you like. Uh, I'm going to be painting at 70% just to uh, not make it quite so uh, dramatic, or it allows me to go over it a few times and change the stroke. Um, I'm going to also be using tight long strokes. I've checked it out and I've uh, decided that that works well for this and uh, 30 pixels as well uh, tolerance 100 percent first thing we're going to do is we're going to leave the background as it is and we're going to make a brand new layer and we're just going to call this ground this is going to be your ground layer that you're going to paint um, above and uh, we're going to fill it with black and the reason we're going to do this is so that if we miss any spots uh, we're going to get some nice sort of black accents that's going to really make it pop. We could also use white because this is a very light painting. Um, I'm going to currently reduce this down to 67% or so just so I can see through it. And then above that I'm going to make my paint layer. So I'll just name that paint. And uh, here we go. Take your art history brush and like I said we're going to use tight long and as you as you go through you'll see what the art history brush is going to do is uh, select areas of color and start doing tight long strokes uh, based on the kind of brush that you've uh, chosen and uh, based on the pixels that it's sampling. Now just to let you look at some of the other ones we could do tight short strokes as well and that's going to be whoop, that's tight long again tight short so that's going to be very short strokes okay and uh, we could do some uh, tight long curls all right, which which actually could work in some areas of this photo, but uh, I kind of like the tight long for this one. Now, and I can go right over them again. So if you don't like what you did once, you can just go right back over it. Now I'm going to whip through this pretty quickly. <clears throat> Sometimes I like to do the areas separately, so I'll do the background first, and then I can go and do the foreground with maybe a different brush. Uh, maybe a smaller brush to add some detail. This brush is only a size 6, so it's quite small, even though this is a pretty low resolution file. Alright, so there we go. I've gone through around the back. Um, I can now just do different parts of the roses. Um, the, the paint colors try very hard to sort of keep within the boundaries of where the colors belong. It's not going to paint pink outside. Uh, this is based on your tolerance but still I like to paint the things as if I were painting them. So I try to sort of paint the different sections separately. Um, I also find that this helps the stroke look a little bit better. So there we go, that's, uh, that's pretty good. I might want to get a small brush, maybe a medium, and just go around my outside here, add a little extra detail refine some of the edges. If I really want to refine it, I can go to a short brush. Uh, I'm using a mouse for this, but it's preferable actually to use a tablet and a, and a, and a pen. Um, it allows you to do different brush pressures with your pen and allows you a little more control. Now, uh, if I was going to spend more time on this, I might actually get my regular paintbrush and start to uh, do a few strokes on my own. Uh, I could also use the smear tool and smudge things uh, to get a few of my own, uh, own little bits of, of finesse in there and to make sure that some of the strokes sort of looked like they were going in the right directions. I'm just going to switch back to my tight long and go over some of these stems again. There we go. Okay, 
Once you have that done, and this is already looking pretty good, uh, what you can do is take your paint layer and duplicate it. Uh, we're going to go to Image, Adjustments, and Desaturate to make it a black and white layer. And this also shows you exactly what you missed. It's okay. And then we're going to go to Filter, Stylize, Emboss. Um, you can keep your angle to whatever you prefer. Height should be one amount 500. Uh, you can vary that, but as soon as you go to height two, it gets pretty thick. Well, maybe we'll render that and we'll just see what it looks like. Um, if you go any higher than that, it gets a little bit crazy. All right, so keep your height down to one or two. I might actually try two with this one just to see what it looks like. Um, with your paint copy, I'm going to rename that. I'll call that my uh, uh, my emboss layer and change the emboss layers blending mode to overlay and there we have it now uh, if you want to sort of dim this down a little bit I can take my paint layer or I can turn off my black layer okay we don't need that really anymore um, sometimes you know it, it's sort of it's up to you if you like it or not you can, it sees the areas that you missed um, and also it can help make your image pop out a little bit it gives you just a ground as if you were painting uh, you can use black for this I could have used white I could have even used green or or picked one of the colors from from some of the flowers um, and I might even take my paint layer and reduce its opacity just a little bit and the more you reduce it you can see you can start bringing out the uh, you can start bringing out the actual flower so I think something in the middle probably looks pretty good. Uh, check out my website. You can find the file uh, there and you can also find a few different files with some more challenging uh, art history brush uh, tutorials.